Hi, everybody. My name is Nish Patel from Inertia Ventures. Uh, we are a C2 Series B focused, uh, AI and ML focused fund based in New York. Um, what we're going to talk about today is how VCs think about investing in AI. Where do moats lie? Um, how are they created? How, how do venture investors think about it? So we'll share a few thoughts, but we'll leave it conversational. We'll have a, a little bit of time for, for Q&A toward the end. Um, but at a high level, I think it's important to be able to differentiate what we talk, what we mean when we talk about uh, AI. There is the hardware component of semiconductors that power a lot of the infrastructure that we see. There is the core infrastructure itself, whether that be foundation models, um, you know, around language models, whether it be uh, middleware infrastructure, uh, and then there's the application level. I think one of the things that our fund spends a lot of time thinking about is this technological wave that we're in right now is very different from previous technological shifts we've had. You know, we feel like in the past, incumbents have been pretty sleepy and slow moving, but this time, they're actually quite savvy. So, how much value uh, out of general AI will be captured by Microsoft and Google and Meta and big tech in general? Probably a lot of it. Um, you know, but there will be gaps and opportunities for startups to innovate. Um, you know, an innovation happen. Um, so we'll, we'll talk briefly about each uh, layer of that, um, and then we'll open up the, uh, the conversation for, for questions as well. Uh, from, we don't typically focus on hardware semiconductors, but you know, one of the things that if you are a founder in that space I would think about is there's gonna be an incredible need for application-specific chips. So the chip that goes in your John Deere tractor will be very different than the chip that goes to power your Mac. Um, and so I think where there may be room for, for innovation and to be able to compete with uh, really NVIDIA or AMD uh, within the semiconductor space, you have to think, I would say, more so application specific. From an infrastructure perspective, um, there are broadly language models that power a lot of the capabilities that a lot of vertical apps that are, that are building on top of it are able to use. And um, it's tough to know right now where moats will, will really lie, both the foundation model piece as well as ultimately how are, how does the tech stack look like for these applications? Are they purely just you know a wrapper that you build on top of a chat GPT? That won't give you any sort of moat. There is no defensibility that comes from not being able to fine tune or add elements of proprietary data, whether that be through a vector database or whether that be through other types of fine tuning. Um, and so I think as we kind of take a step back and think about where are we most excited about as a fund and where do we think that a lot of value can be captured, uh, we'll really be at the application layer where what we, the way we see it, there will be uh, proprietary data and distribution advantages that businesses with uh, you know, network effects or they're able to create that in a flywheel are going to be able to take advantage of and use uh, to be able to create a long-term sustainable competitive advantage. The reason that I say that from an infrastructure perspective is really just because uh, so much of the technology that's being created is becoming open sourced and widely available um, and tools that um, are constantly iterating um, and evolving on themselves. Where we feel like people can end up creating more of a wedge and a foothold is when they have some sort of a uh, you know business development mode, and, you know uh, distribution advantage, um, or some sort of network effects. I guess the other question that we spent a lot of time thinking about, and then I'll open it up for questions, is whether or not incumbents, existing vertical software companies, are better positioned to take advantage of the distribution that they already have, uh, you know, with customers, you know, with with, with a larger base, with you know, partnerships. Um, you know, and whether that, uh, their ability to very quickly adopt the capabilities that are now being unlocked, uh, you know, across a lot of different areas in AI um, versus native AI companies that are going to be able to build and, and, and be created. I think ultimately, the way that we look at it um, and around our thesis, like I said, there are gaps that will still be yet to, to be filled. Um, that big tech won't capture. There's a lot of problems that Microsoft and Meta and uh, Salesforce and Google won't really try to spend time doing. 
Um, you know, and so I think those are the rooms that I would encourage founders in this community to think about building businesses, uh, innovating, uh, you know, creating products. So high level, that's you know our perspective today, which is a snapshot in uh, in an industry that's evolving very very rapidly. So uh, now we'll open it up for anyone that has a question. <laughs>